I then decided, like I said, I became a Zionist and I started to work in a Zionist underground organization in uh, Europe called Amosat Laliabet, the Mossad for the second immigration. The British, they had the mandate over Palestine then, called it illegal immigration. The Mossad became the Mossad later, it's the Mossad today. They dropped the Laliabet and it became the Mossad. We organized the Jews, the survivors, the ones who came back from the partisan groups, the ones who did, who was, uh, were fortunate enough to, uh, to hide in the, in the various countries. Some of them who came back from the Soviet Union already <coughs> to Poland. There were about 250,000 of them in the so-called BP camps, displaced person camps in Germany and in Austria. And 78% of them decided, when they were asked, they want to go to Palestine, which we call a country that we have always called Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. And this organization, this Mossad al Yabet, helped them to go to Palestine. In what way? The British had, of course, the British did not issue any visas. They called it certificates at that time. They wanted, they didn't want Jews anymore to come to Palestine. There were about 630,000 Jews then in Palestine and about the same amount of Arabs. <coughs> The British had decided that they would back the Arabs, so they did not allow Jews to come into Palestine anymore. <clears throat> and we wanted the opposite. We hoped that the United Nations would decide one day on the Jewish state in Palestine. And we wanted more people to get more land, of course, which is a normal, uh, an absolutely normal uh, attitude. So what happened is, they didn't want us, and we wanted to go. So what we did is we chartered or we bought all the boats, all ships, and we sent people, Jews, to Palestine. In the beginning, they didn't notice it, but then they realized what was happening, and they stopped all the ships from entering Palestine. The Jews on the ships were first sent to camps in, within Palestine itself, to the Atlit and the St. Luke's camp. And when they were full, the British established a series of camps in Cyprus. <coughs> Cyprus was also under British mandate. And so this went on for months and for a year and a half. We sent boats, they stopped the boats, they, they took the Jews to the camps, and we, we went on sending the boats. Until one day, I decided to go myself to Israel, to Palestine then. And I, by a coincidence, I arrived in Marseille. We had transit camps around Marseille. 12 or 13 of transit camps around Marseille. Needless to say that the French authorities uh, backed us. They worked, in fact, with us. They overlooked everything we were doing. The British didn't like it because the British and the French were allies. Only two years ago, they were allies against the Germans. Both, by the way, had socialist governments at that time. But the French socialist government didn't listen to the British socialist government <coughs> who told them, you are backing, you are helping people against our wish, against our rules, against our policy. And the French overlooked all this until one day they couldn't do it anymore and they had to give in. But in the meantime, I arrived in Marseille and I was made, uh, I was put in charge of one of the transit camps. So I became a member of the authority who dealt, that dealt already with the ships itself, with the boats itself. And to cut a very long story short, I became a crew member of the most famous of all the so-called <coughs> illegal, we call them blockade runners, ships, the Exodus. I was a crew member of the Exodus, a thing I'm very proud of till today. It's 60 years, 60 and some. The Exodus Odyssey started in July 19, uh, 1947 and ended in September 1947. <coughs> in November 1947, 29th of November, by the way, in Lake Success, 
The United Nations adopted the resolution, the plan of partition of Palestine. They took the mandate from Britain and they decided to establish two states, one for the Arabs that lived in Palestine at that time and one for the Jews. Now, I'm not going into any discussion, but had the Arabs accepted in 1947, dear friends, listen, that's me, I'm sorry, it could be my paper. <coughs> Again, again, see how? No, 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 better, no, no. Not for me. Error. There is. I'll go back. Had the Arabs accepted in November, end of November 1947, the decision of the United Nations. There would be no conflict today. We would have had two states since 1947, an Arab state and a Jewish state. The Jews accepted half of the country. The half was better than nothing. The Arabs decided to have everything. And this is where the day that the Jewish state, Israel, was declared in Tel Aviv, May 14th, 1948. May 15th, this new state was attacked by six <coughs> Arab armies, by six countries, and one army within the country itself. It's then when I arrived in Israel because the Exodus did not arrive. You don't know the story. The Exodus was the first ship the British had decided not to send to Cyprus, but to send them back from where they came, which means to France. So why was the ODC two months? Because we refused to disembark in France. They sent us back to a little port called Port de Bouc near Marseille. We were there for over a month in horrible conditions. It was the hottest summer in the history of this area, the Bouche du Rhône. It went to 42, went to 43 degrees, and believe me, in the belly of the ship, it went to 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. In the most atrocious conditions you can imagine. We had pregnant women, we had old people, and they all refused to disembark. We were four and a half thousand, by the way. Only 60 or 70 disembarked in, the, in, the, in, in Port of Book. And <coughs> the world opinion in all the countries of course attacked Britain on this particular policy. And Great Britain had to give in to the four and a half thousand. In November, like I said, two months later, the majority of the United Nations was obtained when some of the uh, Latin American countries that had decided in the first stage of this proposal to oppose the proposal of the partition. They decided then, and they said so, of course, that under the impression of the fight, the resistance of the Exodus people, they did realize that the Jews needed the country immediately, and they voted for. It's thanks, by the way, to, this, uh, to the Latin American countries that the vote was carried by two-thirds. It was a two-third majority. We needed a two-third majority. In history, the Exodus entered as one of the factors that brought to a very quick decision on Israel, <coughs> on the Jewish state. Not the Exodus alone, but it has done its share. So now we come back, as I was sent back to France. From France, they brought us to Germany. We were put into camps in Germany, in the, in the British controlled zone in Germany. It's incredible. <coughs> When I, when I think about it today, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. We were liberated one and a half year before from, German, from camps in Germany, and the mm -hmm. British sent us back to camps, not concentration, mm -hmm. but internment camps. It's incredible. Mm 